Okay, let's get this die set up. Go ahead and insert your shell holder. Okay, go ahead and run your ram up. And the reason why I want to do this is you want the bottom of this, the die that the collet, the base of the collet is where all the work is done. You want that to touch the show holder and you want some play in here because you can probably adjust it three quarters to one and a half turns or one and a quarter turns probably at most now this is where the little bullet comes in handy so when we first make the pass you're not going to see any neck sizing at all. Now you want to use your indexing collar here as sort of your guidepost. So I'm going to move this by a quarter of a turn from our first correction. And as you go down you're going to feel the tension on the ram here and it's going to get pretty tight as you go along but you want to make sure you don't overdo it. And as long as that bullet only moved at an, about an eighth of a turn right there. And as soon as this bullet starts to grab the neck, you're getting close. There okay, we're close. Now when you get here, this is where you need to make your decision of how much tension you want. Do you want a lot of tension? You want just a little bit of tension. This is the nice thing about the lead eye. The lead eye will do almost what the reading will without having to buy all the different interchangeable co collars for it. But this doesn't keep your run out to a minimum like the reading will. But if you're just experimenting with your ammunition, this is a good way to go. Also, this is a good way of making your overall length gauges too because you see I can push this in and pull it out by hand so if I chamber this right now this will hit the lands and grooves and push it into where I should be seating it so now that we're here we need to just go just a little bit more another eighth of a turn maybe a little less than that Now if you're turning your case necks, um, see that's pretty good right there. Was, see I can seat these almost by hand, but you don't want to seat them by hand. If you're loading at the range and you have something like this, you can do that. But if you're going to be carrying this stuff around for matches or for hunting, you want to make sure that you have to use your seating die in order to seat it. So I just moved this from here. here's where it was, and that's where I think it should be. The other thing, too, is I run my fingers up the body of the case. As you'll notice, and I'll take some close ups with this, is it puts pressure from here forward and in a lot of cases your shoulder instead of being straight they'll have a little round look to it there that's exactly where it should be so now when you set your indexing collar you want to have the case in here because if you just move the show holder up this will still turn and you can just blow your adjustment but with the case in here you're fine just take it run it down and if you really want to you can take a sharpie and make a line like this across here so you know where your adjustment is so if it's a little bit off you know where you need to bring it back to and it's not a permanent 
way of doing it, like scratching with a file or something. I don't like um, scarring my equipment. So once you get this far, what you want to do is test chamber this in your rifle. Because if it chambers, you should be fine. If it doesn't, um, you may have a situation where you have a thin wall case, maybe like a 223 or a 22 Hornet, where the case is real susceptible to being deformed by the pressure you're putting on here. And in that case, you may have to go to partial sizing or just get an neck sizing die. But for what these guys are, these are great. Now, there's something else here. Um, unlike their other dies, the expander ball, or the mandrel, rather, it's really not an expander ball, and the decapping pin are loose. And don't worry about that. They line themselves up in the die. So now that we got this guy adjusted to where we think it should be, I'm going to go ahead and put two more through. take some close-ups and show you what it does. Hmm. That's odd. There we go. And what you're going to see on your neck, which we'll take some close-ups of, is bright marks right around here. And you'll see Sometimes you'll see a bright mark right here, and you see a little curvature on, on your shoulder. Don't worry about the curvature in the shoulder, all that will fire form out. Okay. The one to your left here has been put through the Lee collet sizer. The one in the center is, as it was fired out of the rifle, and it's, it hasn't been sized. And the one to the right has been put through an RCBS full length sizing die. And if as I get the light to reflect off the neck on the one we put through the lead, you'll see how it has kind of like um like almost a scratchy look to it. And that's from that collet forcing it down and being dragged out again by the by that process. And the one that's fired is fine. If we look at this guy, he looks fine all over. I don't know if you can tell, you can barely see it, but on the one that we did here in the Lee has a little bit of a curvature to the shoulder. Where the other one, this one here was fire formed of course, and this one was forced down inside the full length sizing die. So the Lee is a good die. It does exactly what it says it's going to do, and for the money, it gives you a lot of versatility. And when I bought that die, I bought it singly, and but I have a bunch of other sets for different calibers. But I wanted to show you some of the advantages and one or two of the disadvantages of using this. Now, the runout on these things can vary, so let's take a look at that next. Okay, I got my RCBS Case Master here. And we're going through the same order before we got the this case through the Lee, S fire from the rifle, and through the RCBS competition die. So let's do the one that the Lee did. You'll see it there's like a bump every once in a while. That's just where the, the pedals met together and left a small ridge. Actually, this is pretty good. Put that over here. Now for the one that's as far out of the rifle. Not bad. Now for the RCBS competition die. A bit more. Let's 
So that's not too bad. For what the these little guys cost, I think it's well worth it.